Okay, in our last video, we were developing this dog class, and when we left off, we actually made a dog object, right here. We're making a new dog, and this is a call to the constructor. What this is going to do is going to create a dog object. A dog has five instance variables currently, a breed, a weight, fur color, position, and in Boolean indicating if they're barking or not. We take those five things, we wrap them up, in a neat little package known as a doll. But what is actually happening here as well is that this is a call to the constructor. So not only does the dog have those five things, we're going to call this constructor, which just starts executing code. In this case, it is giving these instance variables values. So the instance variables, they're declared in the body of the class. That's important because their scope is going to overlap into these inner bodies. And we see that the constructor is actually referring to those instance variables, right? Breed is an instance variable that exists in the class. Its scope overlaps into dog. And so we can actually access and modify these things. And what my constructor is doing here is initializing these instance variables, giving them values. So that's what happens whenever we create a new dog. That object is created. It's got those five instance variables. It's wrapped up in this nice little dog package. And then we're creating a dog variable, right? This is a variable called Fluffy that is capable of referencing or pointing at or storing this dog object. And once I do this, not only am I creating a dog, from this point on, I can refer to that particular object by referring to Fluffy in this case. I can say Fluffy sit and Fluffy run. And when we left off, it was like, okay, cool you're doing these things these are actions they're supposed to simulate behaviors and the way we do that is by changing the state of our object right run changes position to running position is just one attribute or property and my whole lot of instance variables here right collectively these make up the state the state of my object each one is an individual property. So I simulate a behavior by modifying the state of my object in some way. In this case, I'm only modifying one instance variable, but you could do more. It is changing the state of my object. My dog is in the running position at that point. Our problem currently is this is supposedly happening, but I'm not seeing the change. So the question is, how do we see that change, right? Let me show you one approach which makes some logical sense, but doesn't quite work. Initially, when we create our dog, it is in the running position. I then take that object and I tell it to sit. So I want to see what the position is. Well, the position is a variable that is inside of the object, right? If I try to just access position, IntelliJ is mad because that doesn't exist here. Really position is a part of Fluffy. It is Fluffy dot position. And maybe I want to see what that is. So I put it in a print statement, right? Here's the idea. Position is a variable inside Fluffy. Notice that here and here, we're using parentheses to call these methods. Here, I'm not calling a method, I'm calling a field, a variable, an instance variable that is inside of Fluffy. If we actually scroll over this, the syntax is not invalid. The problem is position has private access. IntelliJ is telling me right there, it's private. Right? If we look back at our instance variables, they're all private. They're supposed to be private. So once we have a object constructed, we can simulate behaviors by calling methods such as sit and run. This segment of code will simulate the sit behavior by causing a change to the state of the object. But how do we see the change? <coughs> Recall that instance variables in dog have private access, right? This is an access modifier. There's multiple options out there. Private will restrict the respective class method or instance variable. Right? This access modifier could actually be applied to things other than instance variables, such as methods. That's going to restrict access to the class that is defined or declared in. 
what am I saying? This private access modifier on these instance variables, it restricts access to this class. Right? I can only see these things inside this class. In my driver, well, I can't see it from here. Right? This is a completely different class. Okay. So if we attempt to access something like position from a different class, such as the driver, we're going to get a syntax error here. Right? I can't even run my program. We just demonstrated that. So the question then becomes, now what? How do we see the change? One flawed solution is to use a public access modifier. Okay, You'll lose points if you do this on an AP exam. If you're doing free response code and you try to create a class such as dog and you've got to have instance variables and you proceed to label them with public, they will take a point off. They're telling you explicitly to do private. You do not have to understand why it has to be private. They're just telling you, just, just do it private. So if, if you want to mentally check out right now, go for it. But I'm curious. I'm like, well, why do I have to use private? What's the big deal, right? Let me just use public, right? One flawed solution is to declare the instance variables with public access. Public will allow any class to access respective class method or instance variable. With public access, the driver class can directly access Gruffy's instance variables. Right, we can actually access position. Let's see that in action. Here, I'm back in my code. Position is still private. I'm gonna flip over to dog. I'm gonna take position, and instead of giving it private access, I'm gonna make it public. Notice that here, no syntax issues. Public is a valid access modifier. I'm going to hop back to my driver. This now works, which means that this syntax is correct. Right? The issue we had earlier is it was private. It wasn't a, a, any other syntax related thing. Right? I'm going inside of the fluffy object and I'm asking for its position. This is not a method. I'm just trying to get the variable directly. So let's try this out. Initially, we're going to create our dog. Why don't we see what the initial position is? I am then going to simulate a change by telling our dog to sit. We'll see what that change is. I'm then going to make another change by telling our dog to run. Let's see what that is. I'm going to try this out. I'm going to right click in free space and tell our program to run. And we're finally going to see our behaviors, our methods take action, right? Initially when I create our dog object, this is a call to the constructor. The constructor is going to set position to running. We print off our position at that moment and we see that we're running, starting out. I then tell my dog to sit. This is going to simulate a behavior by causing a change in the state of my object. So now my dog is sitting. We can see that after we print it off down here in our console. And then tell my dog to run. We're executing the run method. Right? Run changes the position to running. And so now we can see that here in our console. So our methods are working. That's good. What's odd here is that I'm having to use a bit of workaround. The only reason why I can access this is because we erroneously changed this to public. There has to be a different way, something that's better, so that we can have this being left as private without these issues. So why is this solution flawed? Well, public access will allow for complete access. Other classes can access or modify the instance variables directly. Right? Not only can we print this thing off, Sorry, let me change this back to public for a moment. All right, not only can we access it, not only can we see the value, we can actually also edit it directly. I can, using that exact same syntax, I'm gonna say fluffy.position and I'm gonna set it to banana. All right, to see that change, I'm gonna take, let's uh, print off the fluffy's position.
right? We're going to construct our dog and then right away see what the position is and initially it's running as set by our constructor. But because we set this to public access, not only can I see it, I can also modify it. Here I'm assigning it a value of banana. And hopefully you can see right away that this is a little bit of a problem. Why? Well, banana is not like a valid position. In theory, I want to limit it to things like sitting, standing, running, banana just doesn't make sense here. So that is kind of the problem. We want the responsibility of changing position to be left up to Scruffy, but I'm still left with this problem of, okay, how do I see these values if they're private? If I change this back to private, right? It stops this from happening but it also stops me from being able to see the value. Why is this a problem? Why, do, why is it a problem to make it public? Well, we got other classes being able to directly access and modify. In the case of my position, I give it an erroneous position like banana. In the case of something like weight, I give it a negative weight, right? So in practice, what happens is that we use some methods to specifically like grant access to these private instance variables. A method that accesses information about an object without changing the state of the object is called an accessor or getter method. Getter methods tend to follow a similar style. Let's consider position. Right here I am, I'm in the dog class. Here we have the position instance variable and it is private. What I will do to allow other classes to see it is create a method. I'm going to create a method and what it does is it returns position. That's all it does, right? Public string, that's our return type. The name of the method is get position and we don't take in any parameters. All we're doing is returning that position, that string. Okay? This isn't the, <laughs> like I'm returning effectively like a copy of the string. It's something that you can't really modify, but because this is public that means that other classes will be able to use this method. But what they are not able to do is to access it directly because it is still private. Let's enable this. I'm back in my driver. I'm sorry, I'm back in the dog class. Position has private access. Down here with my methods, I'm gonna add some new methods. Doesn't really matter where they go. I tend to put my getters kind of towards the top of my collection of methods. And I want to write a getter, an accessor method for position. Why don't we go with breed first? Now let's do position. Okay, so public string get position. Right, this get position method doesn't take anything in. It returns a string. The string that it's going to return in this case is position. Okay, take a look position is private, this method is public. I'm gonna hop back to my driver. Instead of trying to access position directly, what I'm going to do is take our object, Fluffy, and ask for the position. Instead of me just going inside the dog and pulling out the position variable, I'm asking what the position is. What that's going to do is return the current position. Right, let's take a look at that. So I'm able to do this, but what I'm unable to do is to take that position and change it to something erroneous, right? Because it is still private. If we're doing something like weight, right? Weight is a double. So I'm gonna create a getter method, an accessor method for weight. It will be public, we'll return a double. The name of this method is get weight. It doesn't take anything in and all it returns is weight. We would end up making these for all of our instance variables, right? I'm gonna say public double get weight and all we're doing is returning our weight. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out for my other instance variables, right? And what I tend to do is Kind of group these in the exact same order that they appear here 
So at the very top of my methods will be public string get brie. And all it's going to do is return my brie. Wait is next. So we have our get wait accessor method. My fur color is next, so let's plug that in. Fur color is a string. So our public string get fur color. Notice there's some predictive text. They call it what IntelliSense. There's some IntelliSense going on here. Um, that's because we're following normal conventions, right? The programming world has adapted these, adopted them, molded them. We're going to return our fur, our fur color here. So it is to our advantage to stick with those conventions. Position we've already done. My last one is going to be barking. Barking is a Boolean. So an accessor method for that would look something like public Boolean. Um, here they're suggesting is barking. I would actually also do that as well. You could do get barking and that is okay. It's just the idea that is barking kind of makes more English sense. If that, I did, I did English very well. But here we go. I have five accessor methods corresponding to the five instance variables. Breed, weight, fur color, position, and barking. It allows these instance variables to stay private, but a class like driver can see what they are. Why don't we go ahead and test each of these methods. Right, I'm going to maybe also do these in order. Why don't we do system out of print line fluffy dots uh, breed, I think was the first thing. And system out line fluffy dot get weight. Order doesn't matter here. I'm doing it. I'm a little OCD, I guess. Fluffy dot get fur color. Position is there. And lastly, fluffy dot get or is barking. All right, these are the five instance variables. What this will show is that not only we're we creating a dog with all five instance variables, the constructor is setting their initial values. Our Husky is 60.3 pounds, has black and white fur, is running, but not barking. Sweet. There's those values. Okay. So these methods, these accessors, these getter methods, they're responsible for returning data about these instance variables, right? And here we're walking through this example where position is a string, so our return type is a string. This method can be used to access instance variables such as position from another class such as driver. In contrast, we also have methods whose purpose is to modify the state of an object, and we call those mutator or setter methods. Setter methods tend to follow a similar style as well. We have some mutator methods currently. They are methods that are changing the state of our object. They're simulating behaviors. But it is possible, right? Sometimes we're writing objects that don't make as much logical sense as like a dog, and but we still need to modify the instance variables that are within. These setter methods come into play, right? Keep in mind we have this position instance variable with the access of private. And I want to be able to modify it from another class for some reason. More on that in just a little bit. This is the format that they tend to follow. We have position. We're going to create a method called set position. In this case, we're going to take new, a new position in. This is what we want to change the position to. What we're going to do is save that position into the position instance variable. In order to perform this operation, we don't need to return anything. We give it public access so that other classes can use it. In the case of weight, a setter for weight looks something like this. We have set weight. We're going to take in a double, a new weight that I want weight to become. Here we're performing that action where we're saving the new weight into our old weight, our old instance variable, changing the value that was there. In order to perform this, I don't need to return anything. And we give it public access so another class can use it. So this method is responsible for updating the position instance variable. In this case, a parameter specified, right? Like we want to change our position, change it to what? You need some data to come in to know what to change it to. 
Mutators frequently, they don't have to, but they frequently specify return type of void as their task can be performed without having to output or return anything. This method can then be used to mutate the position variable from another class such as the driver. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this seems like we're setting the instance variables to public but with extra steps. I'm explaining why we go this route instead. You'll see in just a moment. Let's try this out though. We create our dog. We see what the initial state is by calling the accessor methods for each instance variable. What I want to do now is create a mutator method. Why don't we start with our breed? Right? Um, just like always, the order of these things doesn't really matter. Your methods just need to be in your class. However, the typical conventions you'll see is that your accessors are towards the top, and then they're also paired with the simultaneous or the corresponding mutator. Right, here's the accessor for breed. I'm gonna plug in a mutator for breed. Breed is a string, keep that in mind. So we're gonna go public, void, set breed. I'm gonna to need to take in a string. It's the new breed that I want to go to. All we're doing is that we're taking the existing breed and changing it to this new breed. And that's it. Right? Notice I've paired these things. We have an accessor for breed. We have a mutator, a setter for breed. I'm going to do the same for weight. Public void set weight. Weight is a double, so we'll take in a new weight variable parameter. And all we're doing is changing the instance variable to be this new weight. Okay. I invite you to kind of pause and see if you can fill out the rest of the mutators, but I'm going to keep going. Fur color. We're going to take in a new fur color. Position. Positions a string, so we'll take in a string variable here. Lastly, is barking. We'll do set barking. Barking is a boolean, so I'm going to take in a new barking. And there we have it. These are set getters and setters for my dog class. I have an accessor and a mutator for each instance variable. And it is very common to do these things. Okay. Back in my driver, because the method is public, I can use that here. I can take Fluffy and I can set the position directly to something like running. Uh, let's not do running, it's running by default. Let's do setting. Right. I'm gonna take Fluffy. I'm going to call the set position method. This method is public. I can access it from any class, including my driver where I'm at. The set position method takes in a string. In this case, I'm gonna pass it setting. What that's going to do, uh, here it is. We're calling this method, right, set position. We're taking in a string, in this case, setting. So setting is going to be my new position. In order to see that change, I'm gonna print off just Fluffy's position. What we're gonna see is the initial state of our object. I then change the position, which was running, to setting using my mutator method. When I ask for that variable again out of the fluffy object, we can see that, that change is happening. Okay, that seems an awful lot like this set method and this run method, and they, they are, like accessors and mutators. Yes, <laughs> there, there's going to be some objects that we create where these types of methods, they 
either are like way more complicated than just changing a variable or they, they, their existence doesn't make sense. I'm gonna kind of say this again, right? This set method, it's very specific, right? It, it only changes the position to setting, whereas our set position is a lot more robust, a lot more dynamic. We're able to pass in whatever position we want and change it to that. There's going to be some objects we make where behaviors like this do not make sense. Their existence does not make sense, but we still need to edit instance variables. And a setter method, this mutator, following this format, it's a very generic way to provide functionality that allows you to change the state of your object. The other reason is maybe we create objects where these methods, these mutator methods, are actually way more advanced, right? Maybe set, perform set, not only is it changing the position, it also changes um, the dog's barking, right? In order to, to set, maybe we say that our dog is only setting if they are also in the setting position, but also not barking, right? That is a lot more complicated. There's a lot more changes going on. But with our set position, we're able to better control the exact instance variable that we want to change. So yes, there's some overlap there in our current design. Now the next thing you may be worried about is since I can just pass in whatever string I want here, how is this different from just saying banana here? Right? Remember earlier when we had public access, I said one of the problems is we can access the instance variable directly, well, I could just do it here. I could just go through this mutator method and change it to banana. In fact, I'm gonna run it and we're going to see that change actually stick. Okay. That ain't great. But here's the thing. By supplying a method, we can then code in additional logic. Right, something like weight. I can say set weight to negative 9,000. That doesn't make sense. And if I pull out the weight, right, we're gonna see our initial weight of 60.3. I then set the weight to negative 9,000 and we can see that change actually sticks. So that's not great, but here's the thing. Because we are using methods, we can supply additional logic. What do I mean? I'm gonna to go to the set weight thing, set weight method. Instead of just assigning the value without thinking, I can provide some logic here. Let's check it first. If new weight is positive, that is, is it greater than zero? If it is, it's a positive number, and so I'll change it. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything, meaning the weight will stick. Let's try this out, and I'll talk about it a little bit more. I'm gonna flip back to my driver. Actually, I don't even have to flip back. Yeah, let's flip back so we got it on our screen. I create a dog. We're gonna see the initial state. Our initial weight is 60.3. I then try to set the weight to negative 9,000. I then try to print off the weight. Before, it was working. It was giving me negative 9,000 here. Notice we got 60.3, why? Well, when I call this method set weight, passing in negative 9,000, it's going to execute this method, right? We got negative 9,000 coming in. It's gonna ask, is negative 9,000 greater than zero? Well, no, so this doesn't happen. What if we did, uh, or maybe our dog has consumed another dog and now it's at a thousand pounds. I'm gonna execute that one. We are calling the set weight method. It's going to execute the set weight, passing in a thousand this time. We're gonna ask, is a thousand greater than zero? It is, okay. Let's save a thousand into our weight instance variable and we see that change sticks. This is why we use getter and setter methods, right? If we make these instance variables public, there are no checks. There's no opportunity 
to even put checks in there. If we set them to private, we can at least, we are forcing other classes such as the driver to have to go through methods. And in those methods, we can, we can add logic to prevent these things from happening. In the case of something like set breed, I would only, like I would go through here and it'd be a lot, but I would maybe come up with like a list of acceptable breeds and only those could be allowed. Similar to position, right? I would come up with a list of positions that I think are allowed. And I would check to make sure that new position is one of those positions. So we can provide checks. <laughs> that being said, in practice, we don't typically do it, right? In practice, we leave it as something like this, and we hope that people using our programs are smart enough to not put erroneous values in. Um, and maybe like enterprise code and actual like production code, yeah, they're putting those checks in. They're ensuring that they're getting only legitimate values. For us in this class, I'm going to assume that, um, that the driver class, that things that use dog are just not going to do silly things like enter a negative weight. So that explains why we use private and why public is a bad idea. If that's too much, just know that you need to use private instance variables and use getters and setters. Okay. So as we saw, we could pass in a negative weight, but at least with the method, we can check it to make sure that it is positive. Let's recap. The blank access modifier will restrict the respective class method or instance variable to the class in which it is defined or declared. We're looking for private. Methods that return information about the state of the object without modifying the state are known as accessor or getter methods. Uh, I may have just spoiled an answer. Accessor methods are also known as getter methods. Methods that modify the state of an object are known as blank methods. These are mutator methods. They mutate the object. Mutator methods are also known as setter methods. And that's it for this one. That's accessors. That's mutators. I'll see you in the next one.